Okay, cool. Uh, so first of all, there is a lot of light, so I cannot see you. But I wanted to, uh, so we uh, have a really French accent. I hope it will be okay. Um, first of all, thank you for being here. I yeah, you know yeah, it's, um, it's very late and uh, it's, it's very nice for me to be there. So I will try to present myself quickly. So this is my, my website. I don't have any social networks. I mean, I have some, but it's really personal stuff, nothing interesting. I, I stopped to, to post a lot of things on, uh, on the internet. So you can have a, um, uh, have a look and I will talk about a little bit about my works. Um, so a little bit of context. Uh, um, I've been at Kick Festival in uh, 2012, uh, which was almost 10 years ago. Uh, I think it was the second uh, edition of uh, Kick Festival and that's also, I think, a reason why I'm here. Um, at this time, it was uh, really funny. I found these pictures. So just to see that the time has evolved a lot, uh, we, we did some kind of system to, um, uh, to put lights on at, uh, at remotely with a distance. Uh, and it was actually super fun to do. We put uh, some kind of live stream and, and you could um, change the music of the light remotely. So it was 10 years ago. We were really excited about this. And now when I see that, I'm, uh, I think it's very funny. And uh, actually, it's looked like a cult. Uh, where everybody were like, oh, I can, I can light a bulb uh, like this. So it was really fun. So we made this Twitter thing uh, during the Kick Festival. Um, so we blow up the Twitter feed because you could control the lights of the bulbs and see it in real time uh, using just numbers. So number three would light um, uh, a light and so on. So yeah, this was a Kick Festival uh, in. It wasn't just about that, that there was other project as well, but this was one of the main workshops of the Kick Festival. So why this talk? Um, I just want to be super honest here. Um, I met uh, Marie from Kick Festival and we had some, some talks and I just said to her, you know, it's been uh, a time I'm working into this field and, uh, and this year there, there was COVID, etc. I, I, I spent most of my time collaborating with other artists now, I basically work more for artists than doing uh, artistic creation myself. So I don't know if that's a good idea for me to have a talk because I, I maybe I don't uh, feel okay with that. And she said to me that it was actually a good idea to talk about this experience uh, because I start to have some uh, during all these years uh, into this field. So this, wor this talk will be about that. Um, so <laughs> when you do a talk like this, it's like uh, doing, I mean, at least for me, it's, it's like doing uh, some kind of therapy because you have to go deep into yourself and, and think about what you have been doing, etc. And you just realize some stuff. So I've been starting officially doing this work in 2008. Uh, as for reference, I, I realized that 2008 was the year when the iPhone was released in France, which seems crazy, so it's been 15 years already. Um, and um, since all these years, I always have this uh, big issue about uh, speaking about what I'm doing myself. Uh, I put some words to, to just um, realize how people have been calling me through the years and I've, I've been calling myself sometimes. And it's, uh, it's a little bit messy. So you can see there is developer, creative coder, designer sometimes, computer scientist, sometimes magic, magician, UX designer. I mean, all these names you can use. Uh, sometimes I've, I'm, I've been telling, yes, I'm, um, uh, I can work on a graphic designer on this project. Oh, yes, I can do some de web design. And it's really, really hard to, to, uh, to know how to make this it's just one word. So I think I found one after all the years, which is this one, which is interactive design and research because it's really global. And this is what I do basically, just about thinking how to do some research to play with new technologies and every time in the field of design and code. Um, there is also this term I've, I've been seeing on, uh, on Twitter last time, which is a uh, um, pretty okay with me. It's one main design studio. Uh, I see a lot of people having uh, studios right there, but at the end, I'm, I'm alone. I work uh, with a lot of different people for specific projects. But the, the projects are so different that it's, um, at the final, at the end, it's a one-man design studio. 
And lastly, I work since three years uh, with uh, Google's Arts and Culture uh, Lab and uh, with Gail, which is uh, just in front of me, and uh, Freya, which is doing a talk right after me. And uh, if you want to see it, you should not miss it. So just a quick presentation of uh, past projects I've been doing over the years. So I've been separating uh, quickly just to understand also myself uh, how it was going. So there is a big part of uh, working on field of scenography and, and code. So for example, I did this kind of project. I think the image is quite, uh, it's pretty blurry. I'm so sorry about that. Um, so I will take this one again. Um, I did this kind of project for um, uh, Nuit Sonore, which, is, uh, which was at this time take a stage uh, with the uh, light design of the stage and trying to animate it uh, using graphic design principles. Uh, I did some work for uh, Hugo Boss, which is more corporate, but it was how to, um, how to animate uh, with reactive uh, elements the uh, catwalk of, uh, of the exhibition. I did also other projects of um, scenography using motors and lights. Uh, I did also a project for a cultural institution in France. Uh, this one, for example, it's really quickly. Uh, it's a big wall, and you can see uh, the time spent between one um, concert to another. So you can see in real time how much is spent between two, two venues. Um, I think this picture is bad as well. Um, booth for, for Intel, uh, something like that. And also there is another part where I'm working a lot with, uh, with artists. So I will t talk more about this later. So this is a project I made myself. Uh, quickly, it's a big wall of motors and, and LEDs. Uh, I won't go into detail to, to for it. Uh, this is a uh, work I've been doing with uh, Pierre Huyg, and I will talk about it later. I also worked with aquariums uh, using um, interaction and code to make uh, those aquariums alive. And there is another part where, where I'm more working with uh, designers. So you can see the, there is way more color in, in those works. Um, so we will see this project uh, so after. So this is a work with Nicolas Grenier using uh, AI as an um, uh, embodied human. Uh, relic, um, augmented reality project for kids and scenography, also web projects, um, installation projects, uh, graphic design projects, and so on. So that was a quick presentation of uh, all the things I've been doing over the years. So during this, this presentation, I've been thinking a lot, and uh, I've been thinking about one thing which is a little bit uh, strange, actually. Um, I've been doing music a lot, uh, from my 15 years old to my 21 years old. Uh, I learned music myself, and then I was uh, playing professionally. And I re realized that I did the exact same thing with digital art, but years later and in a um, way more large, larger scale. So I've been thinking a lot about that, and I think that you can really find the exact same patterns if you work as a creative technologist, as uh, you can work with music, because you can see the same, uh, same stuff. For example, in music, um, this is super simply put, but uh, you will find usually a lead artist, a musician, a band, and a sideman, and and in digital art, I, I found the same st stuff. Sometimes I'm working for a lead artist. Sometimes I'm asked to be the lead artist. Uh, I'm more like a sideman, and I, every project is like having a different band. And at the end, I'm, I'm a musician. And the concept of creation and co-creation is very similar to it. So if we start by the beginning, uh, Doing things, doing things by yourself, it's the exact same thing with uh, music, because when I started music, I didn't know how to, to use music at all. So with code, it was a little bit the uh, same thing. So it was basically, uh, I, I did some talks before, and I, I, I use the word as blind coding. Uh, it can be really, um, it can be really weird, but it, for me, it started exactly like this. It was like how to create things and how to make shapes wi without actually doing coding by changing variables and trying to, to do um, basically stuff. And I really come from this world of open source, which is um, uh, 
really cool because I, I really did see this similarity with uh, with music as a distortion pedal, and that's w w where there is this stuff. Are there any guitarists in the room or not? Yeah. So when you started, um, you should have noticed that uh, if you have your electric guitar and it's a super clean sound, etc., you start playing, and it sounds not really bad if you don't know how to play. And if you have a distortion pedal, it's like, ah, something is happening. Um, you, you can just do a few notes, and it's, um, it's working some, somehow. So I s for me, the beginning in open source was exactly the same. Uh, the first of all, I'm really come from this school. Uh, I don't know if you know this, uh, this program, which is the beginning of everything. Which it's designed by numbers by, by John Maeda, which has been the influence of processing and open frameworks and open, uh, open source tools uh, or frameworks for, for artists, which is basically a super simple way to do code with words. Uh, if you see this example, it's super simple to understand. Paper zero is the canvas, pen is the, the pen you are going to choose, and line is the line you want to draw with a simple numbers. So it's a super, very simple way for people to understand how to code, uh, because it's, it's really with words and things you can understand. So that's really a beginning, I think. Now there is um, some online versions of, of design by numbers you, you can try. Uh, and then there was obviously processing and open frameworks, which for me has uh, been really super important. Um, each one on a different uh, scale of level. Actually, there is Zachary Lieberman um, doing a talk uh, today. If you should not miss it, because he's, he's one of the creators of open frameworks, and he has been and he's doing so much for the uh, coding community and art community uh, uh, of today. So please don't miss it. So at the beginning of everything, uh, the distortion pedal, it's a little bit like this. I've been, <laughs> I'm so sorry to show this kind of stuff, but it was really the beginning on how you can do stuff with, with code, and that's uh, some kind of silly videos I've been finding uh, in, my, in my hard disk. Um, so basically, it's uh, trying to do funny stuff, and, and you don't realize it's like, yeah, it's the same as playing guitar. You, you do fun stuff that sounds well, and, and and, and with time, you start to, to, to get serious with this. Ah, OK, uh, I put this video. Uh, so this video is, is, is one I really like to show and talk because it's really, um, it's really weird. I think that's my first student project. Um, it's a cube, and nobody knew how to code, but we did it. Uh, so basically, it was a cube you can uh, enter inside. There was a lot of sensors, and basically we tried to make things when somebody was inside the cube. And this is the result, and I think it's funny. <laughs> okay, so you might see... Um, this as a failure or, or, or a success, but I, I, for me personally, see, personally, I see it like uh, as a success because when you start doing things and you really don't know what is code and mathematics and you are able to map uh, lights on a cube, uh, do sensors and try to do something, it's uh, it's the beginning of a lot of things. And then, uh, going more focus on, on the topic of the talk, which is um, uh, working with artists. Uh, when you know to start a little bit to play music, the first thing you want to do is to play with a band. <laughs> uh, and this is uh, what I've been doing, exactly the same with uh, with artistic world project. Once I had a little, little bit of skills or emotion to understand how uh, coding works and what you can do actually with this, I start doing projects. So uh, today I will show some recent projects and some old projects with artists and try to to tell um, little stories about that and tell you a little bit how it works uh, and and see if there are some sim similarity with that. Uh, so first of all, it's working with artists uh, really. Um, 
I will show a project. Uh, it's it just finished to be presented in Montreal uh, this year. We are trying to make it tour. I hope so, I hope it will tour soon. Uh, so Nicolas Grenier is a, is a painter. And um, he had this idea of uh, he wanted to to use uh, AI to to put AI into someone and to be able to have a conversation with um, an AI embodied. So there is a um, little video out of it. The sound is not great, but you will understand the system. It, it's actually pretty fun. So it's it's a stage where there is an actor and there is some some um, people from the public and both has, have a microphone and everything is um, transcribed in real time. But the actor has, has glasses and he can see the result of the AI telling the, the answers to it. Um, so there is a, this kind of weird conversation between the public and and, um, and the actor. So you are talking in, to AI, but it's actually a real person. So it's really you have to experience it. Uh, in video, it's not um, it's not perfect, but um, but it's it's really something. And Nicolas is um, really a, a painter, so he is not that much into interactive. So when he when he called me, he, I knew it was going to be um, a special process. Uh, because he, he just had this idea, but uh, he, he had a strong idea of the stage design and everything. But um, everything has to, has to be uh, to be created in terms of, of colors and, uh, and interaction, etc. So um, one of one of the things of this project is I was really surprised there was actually no no design. Uh, we had a lot of talks on on how we can do that, etc. And I never saw on how, how it could look. So one of my job actually was not that much to work on the internals of having an AI talking to, um, to a server, etc., etc. It was more about, uh, oops. Oh. You won't believe it, I think my computer crashed. Okay. Okay, no problem. I will restart it and uh, take it over. I will restart my, my computer. I don't know why it's crashing. Um, okay, no problem. Uh, so, yeah, just to um, continue on this. Um, there was no design uh, with this project, and actually I was pretty sure I was going to work on the internals of how to, to yeah, I'm, I'm restarting, so I think it will be okay. Sorry, this is a little bit disturbing. Okay. Well, it's almost here. Okay, okay. Everything okay? Okay, sorry, that's super disturbing. So I, I will try to continue. I'm so sorry. Um, so yeah, my my point was um, when I started this project, uh, I really had in mind: okay, I will have to work on how to use ChatGPT to use a server to make the voice recognition, etc. Really thinking about technical stuff. Uh, but at the end, the technical stuff wasn't the most uh, interesting. The most interesting was to uh, work with the actors and to understand exactly how the experience could be. And also, there was this thing about un understanding who is Nicolas Grenier and uh, how we see things. So it, m it might sound silly, but we spend a lot of time uh, working on the background and the colors rather than the system itself. Uh, 
Uh, and actually, it was super nice because all of his work is really about color, about gradients, about uh, applying layers to another layer to another layer. So that was yeah one of the main jobs. And then the rest was actually experimenting, etc. So it was a super nice uh, experience. And you can see on the website, Premonition AI, uh, there, there is a lot of information uh, on it. Uh, another person I'm artist, a super great at artist I'm working with is Justin Emar. Uh, we did this uh, project. I mean, it's, a, it's her project, but I worked really closely with her to this project called um, Supra Organism. Uh, so we'll try to, to tell a little bit the story from my point of view about it. Uh, so basically what she'll be doing, I, I won't talk about conceptual uh, thing or anything because it, it's really, uh, you should talk with her to, to know about that. So we'll uh, more talk about m my side of things. Um, so basically it's a sculpture made of a uh, lot of different lights. Every light has a little motor so it can tickle, tick, tick, tick on, on all the glasses. Every glass, it's, um, it's a glass she has been, um, I don't know the word, uh, soufflé, to blown like, yeah, uh, with a souffleur de verre uh, herself. And um, one of the main idea was to use bees uh, to, to animate uh, all of this. But we didn't know actually how to do that, so we went together on a residence to try things because uh, there is a lot of little things, motors, etc. But the main thing was uh, how to work with bees, actually. Um, and that was the funniest part with uh, Justine. So here is a photo of the um, uh, installation. Some, some little close-up so you can see. Um, so first thing is, okay, we need to have some uh, data of, of bees, so we um, she, she could find some, somewhere where there was a bee yard, I, I think it's called, or something like that, so a place where there are bees, and we put inside a live stream of a camera in front, and also um, another camera inside of it to just to have data. And we stream that uh, as well. So this is the material we, we had. Uh, so and, and actually, it's if, if, you, if you're a little bit into programming and tracking, it's super cool material to work with. Uh, so the idea was to try to track this, uh, and yeah, it's really easy to track a bee. It's super simple. You have crazy result uh, with crazy accuracy, etc. But it's a little bit more difficult to track a bee and know exactly who, uh, this is bee number one, and this is their pass. This is bee number two, etc., etc. Because the computer doesn't know. I mean, if you use a model, it doesn't know necessarily uh, this is the same bee for this frame, and this is the same for the another frame, so you can't um, have um, accurate stuff. So this is where I go back to open source. Uh, it's, it's really crazy. We did a lot of research, and I found uh, an open source study of a Japanese university who, <laughs> who ma made a whole uh, project on how to track bees. Uh, so we used it and we, t we just tried it. Um, uh, it was actually pretty fun, so I don't know if you know about, m about machine learning, etc. If you want to use a custom model, a lot of time you have to do uh, labeling and stuff. So one of the first things to do was to take the um, material we had and to say, okay, this is 1B, this is 1B, this is 1B for a lot of different frames. Um, but we didn't know about the uh, results. And yep, it worked. So perfect. So we we could clearly have a, a working tracking. I mean, on, on this video, it's not perfect because some bees are missing. But uh, but then we we got this improved. So so perfect. Uh, we had the perfect material for this. So we track bees uh, in real time. We record it every day and we stream it as well. So we have a lot a lot of data. So one an another idea was to try to to make a model as also to pre to make f fake bees actually to use the data uh, we had one day and then generate some uh, fake movement of bees made ma by machine learning and it worked we used a lot of different uh, strategy this one was using frame prediction which was a little bit odd but 
at some point it works. So this is some kind of uh, result. So it works, it's really simple, it's just a question about feeling. And, and that's where there is this, I think, interesting thing um, when you work with an artist is, uh, one of the things I've been learning is uh, that I, I could have been, okay, I need to track the bees exactly perfect, have a 100% accuracy, and uh, this needs to be scientific. But when you work on an art project, it's, it's okay if that's not perfect, because at the end, what will stay is the emotion, and, and how it looks, and the feeling out of it. So then the big part of it is to, is to use this data and to make something beautiful out of it, uh, out of it. and that's where come this, um, kind of um, feeling and communication with the artist, which is uh, really, really, really important. We, ne we made another iteration of this project at uh, Saint Catherine Paris, uh, which was using this data and um, illuminate the, um, the Saint Catherine. I think I'm super slow, so... Uh, oh no, it crashed again. No. Ah, but wait, there is something weird. I can show my... I can see my mouse on, the, on this screen, but not on this one. Okay, it's happening again. Can we... Yeah, I just want to try something. Maybe it's, uh, it's this. That's really no luck at all. I think I will need to restart again. En fait, bah ouais, mais ça se plante bizarrement. Ok, parfait. Putain, c'est folie quoi. I'm so sorry. Uh, to be honest, I've been working on this slide since uh, two days and I didn't have any crash. So I don't know what's happening here. Okay. Well, I'm I'm really sorry. Usually I never have some stuff that crashes. Okay. Well. Okay. I think it crashes when I put some videos. Okay, I think I will have to do the rest of the presentation without using videos. En fait, ça crache sur les vidéos. Je pense. I'm so, so sorry. I don't know why it's happening. I'm super sorry. Pardon? C'est ça. No, no, and um, yeah, this, this computer, I've seen a lot of uh, external screens, etc. So I really do not understand why, why this is happening and why now, obviously. Uh, so thank you for supporting me. Okay, for the record, I have been hearing that there was one speaker one year that um, could do only half of his talk because he was uh, super sick. Uh, so I'm thinking, okay, maybe only with that vi video, maybe it's okay. Okay, avoiding videos or maybe big videos.
Okay, well, I wanted to show you the other stuff, but uh, I won't because I, it's crashing for, uh, during these videos. But we did a lot of different alternatives of this. Um, one was to use this data of bees to eliminate, eliminate this building. And another one, I really wanted to show it, but it was to do the exact, exact same with a contemporary uh, orchestra. Uh, okay, I will try to do this. Yes, okay. So another uh, project of, uh, of Justine, I just started on the beginning uh, of it, but just to say for this one, it's uh, the different as well. Is um, I really, f for the, the other project with uh, Supra Organism, it's, I really feel there was some kind of um, creation on, on my side. It's uh, really um, a foreign uh, process, but sometimes it, get, it can be totally different. For, for example, on this one, I was really acting um, uh, on a more scientific side of things. Uh, basically, one of the idea was to, to use data of uh, people in space sleeping and try to merge it with uh, pictures of uh, les Grottes du Chauvet, which are prehistorical, uh, uh, oh, I don't know how to say grotte in English. Cave, cave. Prehistorical cave, and um, and and to link all this data to machine learning to generate images of this cage, so generate uh, hallucinated images of um, prehistoric uh, images. So for this work, I really uh, really work into okay. I can get the, get the data, uh, try to parse it, try to create models uh, on it. And um, and and then she she followed the project uh, more alone. So it's it's really um, if if we made some comparison uh, with music, it would be totally having a, a partition, and you can okay, I can play that. Okay, okay, you're good, you're good. That's okay. Um, another uh, person I'm working. I, okay, I think I only have eight minutes. So I will I will go super fast. Uh, a person I'm working with is uh, Pierre Huig since 10 years now. Um, I just want to talk quickly about a uh, project we made, uh, which is Offspring. Um, it's basically, uh, it's a stage, uh, but more tiny, looking like um, a normal, regular uh, music stage with a lot of different lights in grids and, and smoke and, um, and music. So the idea was to put music, uh, to, to make uh, an hallucinated uh, s version using machine learning of Gymnopédie de Satie. Uh, I don't know if we have sound here. Do we have sound? No. Okay, it's a tough one. But it's, it Okay. I wonder if you can hear something. Nothing? There is no sound, huh? no. Okay, so I, I will go to the next slide. So basically, I, I don't know if you can see the Ginopédie of Sati. Maybe I can try to sing it for you. So may, maybe that that would be a, <laughs> a cool thing for this talk. Which is uh, so it, it does like dun, 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 dun. it's a really slow piano music. Uh, and using machine learning, we made the version where. You can totally understand w what song it is, but the computer is taking uh, his own path, and it's never the same, and it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, and and the idea was to to have this music and to have the lights like this. So this is where it's super cool to to work in uh, with an artist because if if you like into coding, you 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 have some process uh, and you need to understand things. 
like, okay, ex I want to understand exactly why this light is on and why it's not off. And um, a lot of time it's not that easy. <laughs> so I didn't know what you to do exactly. So I've been trying to do some stuff like this, but without any, uh, any, any, any more ideas. And at some point it said to me something super interesting. It said to me, okay, uh, one day I was walking uh, a little bit far and there was Fête de Luma, uh, which is a big festival. I was like around one kilometer to Fête de Luma and it was at night and I could see uh, from far the lights, the colors and hear the sounds like this. And this is exactly that uh, that I want. And I was okay. I understood. <laughs> so that's, that was super nice. So, so there was no crazy rule or some stuff like that. It's just about feelings, which is uh, actually cool when you do code to, to do this kind of stuff. So this, I shouldn't show that, but uh, this is um, a little um, interface on how it looks. I don't have any crazy video out of it, but you have to, to see it and, and feel it. So the result is some kind of, of ball um, going, etc., uh, etc., et which, which, which has also relation with, with music, obviously. Uh, then we, I don't have so much time, but we, we did a lot of uh, aquariums, um, and it also the same process. Uh, it's, it's, uh, those aquariums were going on and off and having uh, various colors using the, the data from when Giverny painted um, uh, when Monet painted um, in Giverny the triptych, uh, and at the end it was really a question of uh, sitting and, and understand how it feels. So I only have two minutes left. Um, another project I've, I've been doing with uh, Hero. Uh, it's a, it was a super nice project called Les, Les Montagnes Magiques. There is sound as well. Uh, so it's for kids, uh, and it was super, super nice. Um, it's a augmented reality project where Hiro, the, people you, the person you can see on the right, has been doing illustrations, and he, he uh, records illustration like this and put in augmented reality uh, behind the result out of it, so you can see it uh, um, here. So in, in that case, uh, it's it's also another context because you work with two artists, one is illustrator and also there was one musician and I came as a creative coder into it. So beginning of thing is just to create a system that works, obviously, uh, which is an augmented reality one. Okay, you have a camera and we can track something and something happened on the screen, which is actually for the record very hard to do now with an analogic camera because every augmented reality system is um, done with phones. And um, and then there was like where I was super happy to contribute with with that is to to try to find another ideas into the project even if I wasn't one of the creators, but was to say hey we can do a lot of different stuff uh, with code. One was to use the sound of uh, Emmanuel playing here to to make blobs. One one another one to was to create. Um, uh, a rendered version of um, the bird flying and making it interactive on stage and all, all these kinds of things, which was uh, pretty cool. So at the end, there was the whole show um, with this augmented reality, tr uh, augmented reality system, but I could, um, I could put some ideas in, in it to, to add some little magic into it, which was uh, great. Okay, so I have one minute left, so I think I will go super, super fast. Um, uh, another is working with graphic designers. Uh, I don't know if I can do this in one minute. It would be impossible. But for me, it was really, really important uh, because it's the first time I learned to work with uh, people from the graphic design field, which is another way of doing things. Um, for this project, it was the first big one I, I made. It was for Nuit Sonore. Uh, the, the idea was to Nuit Sonore, which is an electronic music festival, to use uh, the space, uh, arch architectural space, to, 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 make, um, to make an installation. And 
graphic designer see a lot of things as grids, so everything was related uh, to do some symmetrical design uh, and also to the LED parts to, to use this as a um, design material. So we used all this data to, to create a super simple pixel system and open it to, to the people. So at the end, we had like, uh, I don't know, more than 1,000 co contribution, and we used this material um, on site uh, during the festival. So then there was a lot of uh, different iterations on design, but for um, an electronic festival. And this is also a variation we made some years later. It's, a, it's the same system, but for another setup, uh, because it was in, a, in another place. So the idea was to uh, to, to use uh, to make use of the grid system into this um, into this place, uh, and we created a special system when you could do animations based on this um, uh, on the systems they have been creating using um, using design to to do that. So those are, these are some uh, some tries. Uh, this is. Simply put, this is um, the main pattern, the main grid of how we could make animations. And then, after working uh, with graphic designers, uh, <laughs> I see this is beeping the time. Uh, one of my main goals at the end was to, was to try to find a way for them to create, actually. So there is a video. Uh, I hope it won't crash. But uh, this looks complicated, but uh, at the end, I w uh, one of my goals was to give to the graphic designer a simple way to do themselves animation and to create. So that's, that's why I did a lot of um, op um, live coding for it. So, uh, so this is a sc old screenshot I have, but uh, the designers knew a little bit about code, but not that much. So I did a super simplified interface for them to be able to create their own animations. So this, this was really cool because um, basically it, it was an opportunity to give a lot of power to graphic designers. And then the good thing about it is when you learn and when you work with people, then you, you're interested on, in doing things. So then we, we also did a lot of uh, projects. This one is called Translate, uh, which was uh, some kind of uh, homage to some algorithm. Uh, and we did this together. Um, I don't know about the time. Should, should I continue or? OK. Um, I hope it won't crash. Um, so yeah, just to focus on, on the main topic with uh, Superscript, it was really, uh, if I take the analogy of music again, it was really co-creations. Uh, it was a band where we were three, and it was uh, very rock and roll, because ev everyone was go um, could know what he wanted to, to do, and it was like creating an album. Um, uh, Cheval Vert, it's, uh, we made this project together, and we tried a totally different system. Uh, I think it's the only time I did that. Um, Cheval Vert, they are awesome graphic designers based in Paris. Uh, I'm pretty sure you know them. And we had the opportunity to do this project uh, into uh, a parking, actually, which is odd but interesting at the same time because it's a place where a lot of people is uh, is walking. So we decided to try to make a project uh, as a collaboration, but it was like if each one have been doing his own record, but for the same project. Um, so they work on all the graphic elements, graphical elements, and also they um, put this project, uh, which is an iteration of something that they have been doing before, which is uh, basically a data visualization of, um, of people walking into this, this space. Um, and you could interact with it and with lights. It's a, it's a beautiful object. And Together, we created the structure of it, which was holding some pieces of it, and uh, which was in the center of everything that they have been designed. And I was in charge of um, thinking about how the, the we could 
make the LED moves and also with the screens. And I was super happy <laughs> to work with the screens because it was like the beginning of machine learning and, and tracking system. I don't know if you did a lot, but before, if you wanted to track uh, some people walking, um, it was a little bit of pain. You, you need a depth camera, etc. And it was the beginning of um, open pose and all these systems, which are pretty cool because you just put a, a normal webcam and you can track uh, people like this. So I really wanted to to do something with that. And on a really simple, simple level, which was, OK, there is a lot of people walking. And I just want to have a simple way to see them walk and to have uh, some of gallery of them and try to see if I can uh, experiment uh, in design with those things and if I can make live in a totally different way. So, for example, on the left, you can see it's just like a lot of different people walking. And I think it's super funny because you can see different patterns on some. Uh, uh, it's like, OK, you can see this is more like an old guy. Uh, this guy is more angry. This guy is uh, chilling, etc., etc. And I think there is something very beautiful at putting all of them together. So for example, this one is a super simple uh, screen, but it's people at the same time, but they have never met. And then I just wanted to do some iterations, but literally for free uh, of all this data and to see and how we can uh, try to express it in a, in a graphic design way. Uh, so these are all the screens I've been, uh, I've been doing with all this data. And it was a lot of different experiment, experimentation, like trying to see if we can um, put some fluids on the speed of, um, uh, of a particular uh, feet or hand, uh, playing with speed, with symmetry, etc., etc. So those are all experiments. And yeah, and this made a, a, a global project uh, for, for this. And I think I will surely end here because then I have um, some slide with musician, but it was more about anecdotes. So I will uh, I will put it like this. Just one little thing: we have a um, workshop tomorrow uh, with Gail, which is here, which will be about um, tracking and uh, generative AI. So if you want to come, you're you're more than welcome. And uh, sorry about all the uh, issues we have been having today. Uh, and thank you. <laughs>